So today we're talking about seizures and exercise. Now this is a very thin line that I walk because on one hand, I need to exercise to prevent seizures, but on the other hand, exercise can also cause seizures and it has in the past. So to get going with this topic, I'm gonna start by just telling you what the doctors have to say, what research and facts say about one, stagnancy when we're not exercising, two, when we are exercising and we're at that healthy baseline level of exercise that's always recommended, and then three, when we're getting into the dangerous territory of strenuous exercise. So number one, when we're stagnant, that's when we can experience that low blood flow, which is dangerous in its own right. And historically for me, that has had relations with me having a seizure. So brain imaging studies have revealed that blood flow is related to many behavioral and psychiatric issues such as depression, suicide, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, ADD, ADHD, traumatic brain injury, hoarding, murder, substance abuse, and last but certainly not least, seizure activity. And this is information sourced from Amen Clinics. And wow, as I'm saying this, I just looked at the article that I'm reading here. And it also says that low blood flow is the number one brain imaging predictor that a person will develop Alzheimer's disease. So if there's anything we're getting from this is that blood flow is pretty crucial. So in addition to everything that we've been mentioning here that Amen Clinics has to say about low blood flow, it says here as well that dizziness can be a sign of a problem with your blood flow. Your brain needs a steady supply of oxygen-rich blood. Otherwise, you can become lightheaded and even faint. Some causes of low blood flow to the brain include blood clots, clogged, ar clogged arteries, excuse me, heart failure, and an irregular heartbeat. And for many older people, standing suddenly can cause a sharp drop in blood pressure. And I'll tell you, that's not just for old people. I've actually had a seizure due to standing up too quickly. I've actually been having a lot of issues with that in the recent past, still kind of dealing with it. And it's certainly not just for people with structural damage, I'm certain. I'd be curious to hear what other people with epilepsy and other neurological issues would have to say about that and its connection to having seizures. So moving on to the next one, which is just basic general exercise when we're kind of in that happy medium. And I'll start off with something that is rather rudimentary, but something that we just definitely need to really keep very much in the front of our minds, which is that circulating blood supplies your brain with the oxygen and nutrients that it needs to function properly. Blood delivers oxygen and glucose to your brain and according to a study at the lab in the University of Arizona, your brain needs about 15% of your heart's cardiac output to get the oxygen and glucose it needs. In other words, it needs a lot of blood circulating through it to stay healthy. And also do know that you don't just need good blood and oxygen flow to the brain, you also need it throughout the entire body. However, of course, in my case, and for the purpose of what we're talking about today, it's very much that we need to get it to the brain, which brings us to that last tranche of exercise that I was alluding to earlier, which is that anaerobic. So that last sort of tranche that we were just talking about, which is exercise just in general, when we're talking about getting good exercise and when we hear that being advertised all the time and prescribed they say regular exercise and usually they're referring to the aerobic state where you've got some good blood and oxygen moving throughout the body being delivered to the brain a healthy heart rate however once we get into that strenuous exercise and we get 
in the danger zone where seizures are much more likely and where I've had plenty of seizures due to is that anaerobic state. And that's when we're exercising so hard that our body can't get that proper amount of oxygen. And when this happens, that's when we feel that intense burn where there's a formation of lactic acid in our muscles. So this is something that I've really been diligent about incorporating into my exercises. And I really encourage you guys to think about as well is that balance between not moving, not exercising, as well as exercising too hard. Because a lot of times what I've found is that I'm actually somewhat at a risk of a seizure when I'm really stagnant and I haven't been moving, getting that blood and oxygen moving because I'll get those headaches and those really sharp drops in blood pressure. And a lot of times as well, when I'll be exercising too hard, I can kind of feel sometimes perhaps an aura coming on or the heart rate goes too high and I'm having a hard time properly getting oxygen around because when you enter that anaerobic state like we just mentioned that's when the oxygen has a much harder time distributing through our body because we're forming lactic acid so i'll start reeling off a bunch of seizures that i've had that were exercise related the first one that i remember having was when i was at a swim meet surprise surprise you're holding your breath and you're also working out really hard and it was the holding of the breath that definitely caused that lack of oxygen after that i also had one at the gym i was going really hard because i was trying to squeeze a workout in really quick i was going really hard i was lifting weights way too fast i ran a mile on the treadmill at like a record speed i was lifting weights that were definitely too heavy for me and I wasn't breathing well. And of course I had a seizure in the gym in front of a bunch of people per ordinary fashion, Brandon seizure style in front of a bunch of people. Another one, when I was biking, I was at Seattle when I was in college, also the place where I had the seizure at the gym. It was late at night and I hadn't gone for a good exercise in maybe two days. And I was thinking in my head, oh boy, well, it's time to get out there and get some exercise because I want to prevent a seizure and keep the good blood and oxygen flowing. And of course, at one in the morning, I'm trucking up this huge hill. I love the burn. That and of course, I'm thinking pain is weakness, leaving the body. The burn is good that means that I'm working hard but at this point I haven't made the connection that if you're working out too hard and you feel that intense burn that for me especially that can put me in the danger zone there is a certain amount of burn you know they say the pump that is a bit of a good indication that I'm actually working out and getting a, a good workout in but again with the idea here of lactic acid and the anaerobic state because when I was on this bike ride when I finally got to the top of the hill I was absolutely gassed and I was riding down a neighborhood road again this is 1 a.m. in the morning the still of the night everybody's asleep I feel an aura again I start looking to the left and I'm just thinking in my head Oh, well, this is just another kind of mini panic attack. I have them all the time. But my head kept looking to the left. So I had to use the memory of the sight of the houses near me and quickly kind of churn the bike and direct the steering wheel towards the front door of one of the houses because I knew I'm going to fall now. I'm seizing. I have no control of the bike. So I had to strategically fall and seize. So I fell and ran into the near the front door ran into the basketball hoop and then I'm I've crashed and I'm tied up on this bike and I start seizing and this was the one where I thought to myself well if I haven't died in all of those past seizures that I've had then this is definitely the one 
nobody's coming. It was about 45 seconds, give or take. And nobody's come to my rescue yet. And I'm thinking, well, of course, because everybody's asleep and it's 1 a.m. Can't really knock people for being asleep and not ready to save a college kid in distress who's having a seizure. But thankfully, not too long after, some of the residents came out and they were very friendly and one of them was able to unscrew my necklace and put one of my emergency tablets underneath my tongue. So special shout out to everybody out there who might be thinking of ways to carry their emergency medicine around in a convenient way. Definitely maybe find a necklace or a pendant that can go around your neck and you can put the seizure emergency meds under your tongue. I don't know what you take. I take the clonazepam, I think it's also known as clonopin. It's the small guys that fit well in a pretty small necklace that I'm able to unscrew. But for the time being, that's a little irrelevant. Moving on to the next seizure that was exercise related. Back when I was training Muay Thai martial arts, we would end one of our classes with 20 kicks. 20 roundhouse kicks we would do 20 on the right leg and then 20 on the left leg and that can be a lot because kicking does require a lot more energy than punching usually at least for me it does i was still developing strength in my kicks learning how to kick with the right technique and not use as much energy and i definitely was not pacing myself or holding anything back you know I like to be a bit of a hot shot or at least always try to and that is an instance where I really was not aware of my breath and just was winded for the entire time and you would expect at this point that I would have connected the dots and have been a little more aware of these kinds of things but again I guess you just live and learn and sometimes you can let it slip your mind and I wasn't really that aware that kicking could be so exerting that it would cause a seizure but I guess that's the thing that I'm learning is you can get exerted and experience a very strenuous workout no matter what the activity is so that's something I've definitely taken with me going forward now another example is not as substantially related to what we're talking about but certainly involves exercise and thought I would share with you as well I was going for a run and had a seizure while I was running on the sidewalk but the conclusion that I came to with this one was that I had smoked some marijuana a couple nights before that and that was when the withdrawal kicked in it was towards the evening when I was going for a run and I know as I've said before when there's multiple forces at play you're going to have a seizure I was two days into that withdrawal process from smoking marijuana and I was also going for a run. The run wasn't exactly strenuous. I was just going for a nice jog. But still, that's going to cause a seizure. You need to choose one or the other. So I oftentimes wonder if maybe I wasn't running. That would I have had that seizure due to THC alone. But nonetheless, you live and learn. And so I've learned that. Of course, you can't have, you know, multiple forces at play. And let's just lay off the reefer. But that's neither here nor there. Moving on to the next seizure. Another one, I was biking uphill. I went up a huge hill. And, of course, the way I am, always being kind of competitive internally, I had to race up this hill and go as fast as I could. 
Now, I could have taken a longer route and have had a more leisurely and less strenuous bike ride on my way home. But, of course, I decided to take the really steep hill up and I was pedaling like crazy. And wouldn't you know it, there's cars behind me and I have a seizure with traffic just passing me by. And fall down, get nice and scabbed up as I'm seizing and my bike's on top of me and I'm laying on the street. So that was a fun one. And moving on to the next one. I was at a water park in West Virginia, of all places. It was like a... Sort of like one of those bouncy inflatables that you climb to the top and every little kid there was having no problem climbing to the top and jumping off into the water same as my roommate but he's really tall certainly more stronger than me and I was struggling man I think I only got to the top a couple times I was huffing and puffing my upper body strength isn't the best I was just I was halfway up the obstacle the little uh, bouncy thingy and that's when I noticed my head moving to the left and then I had to scream to my buddy that I was having a seizure so I jumped into the water and he jumped like 10 feet above 15 feet above into the water and thank the Lord that they make you wear life jackets for that thing because I'm I know I would have drowned and this way I was able to seize and I'm not being submerged in the water the life jacket is keeping me at the surface so I'm gonna swallow some disgusting water but my roommate was able to drag me to the shore and I had a clonazepam in my back pocket because they come in those really airtight packages but again that was another lesson in being able to gauge what's strenuous and what's not too strenuous next one returning to the lightheadedness I was just in my room sitting at my desk doing some work I stood up and I, I don't know if I stood up too fast. I, I would rather not like to say that because I'm only 25. And man, I don't want to say full blown that I am have that's part of my life now, however it is. But yeah, that was the seizure. I stood up, got really lightheaded. Thankfully, I was right next to my bed and I was able to just jump right into my bed, not hit my head on anything or fall. The next seizure, I went for a late night run. Again, I'm starting to learn that exercising too late in the night is, is probably not the best idea. However, what was different about this one, at least that I was able to make a note of, is that I had taken my evening meds and then had gone for a run. And here's why that's stupid, because I took my evening meds and of course I became drowsy like I often do. Nowadays I'm not drowsy every time but sometimes I do get that drowsiness which is a little bit of a headache as well. But I felt that extra kind of dosage of gravity where my head feels like it weighs more than it does. So I went for that run and then I was doing some agility exercises. And that miniature headache from the medicine combined with rapid movements, again, two forces, two things that shouldn't go together. If my meds are making me kind of drowsy and create that muscle fatigue, much like seizure medication does, then I should be going to bed and not exercising. So that's something I learned was even if you're not in that anaerobic stage is you should just kind of obey the laws of your medication. Next seizure. Take a wild guess. 
what form of exercise equipment I was using when I had this seizure. That's right, I was on my bike. However, this one, I wasn't on my bike when I had the seizure. I went for a pretty long bike ride from the west end of Brooklyn to the easternmost end of Brooklyn where it meets the water. Now, it wasn't that long of a bike ride because it didn't cover too many miles, but it was a ton of start and stop. There was all kinds of street lights, stop signs, having to start, stop and go, which I think is maybe where that additional lactic acid and stress built up because afterwards I had gone on much longer bike rides and been fine. Just uh, about a week ago from recording this, I went on a 30 mile bike ride and didn't have a seizure. So it's interesting how things work like that. Now, the next one, this wasn't a seizure. It's, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's really silly. But it was, I didn't have the seizure, but I think I came really close. I was with a couple buddies and I farted. And it was a really high pitched one. So I really went all out and tried to, for that comical effect, make it be as long and loud as possible and what happened there was I got lightheaded and I kind of experienced some of those lights that I'm sure some of you are familiar with and people get these who don't even have epilepsy you kind of push with your head or whatever and then you can see kind of like some sparkles in your vision and then I had a very similar aura like feeling and I was definitely like okay we're just gonna let our body do its thing I'm not gonna try and exacerbate any flagellants okay so I'm done with that one moving on there was another one when I was doing Muay Thai however I was able to catch it I was kicking I'm not sure if I was kicking or it was just an integration of kicks and punches but nonetheless I kind of felt it coming on because I had had a seizure while doing Muay Thai prior as I mentioned so I just thought that I would intercept quickly took my gloves off went and took a seizure medication and I stopped it in its tracks So that's a friendly, rather comprehensive list of all of the seizures I've had that relate to what we were talking about with the science and the aerobic and the anaerobic stages of when we're exercising as far as blood flow is concerned. So as you can see, it's all a walking, living, breathing science experiment. And you know, it's something that we just need to become very aware of because if we're going to live a healthy and capable lifestyle as people with epilepsy, we certainly need to keep in mind exercise, oxygen rich blood flow. And I'll tell you, it really helps with my overall mood, memory. I'm sure a lot of you are aware that with our meds, our memory is just terrible. Um, exercise is not going to be a solution at all to the memory, but I can just tell you when I exercise, I just feel light years better than when I don't. There have been times in the past where I've been way too lazy. Maybe I'm laying around a bunch and that heart rate just isn't going anywhere. So I can tell you firsthand that you really want to place a priority on at least once every two days that's kind of my rule here is trying every other day get my heart rate going get a good sweat in and i'm sure a lot of you here might be thinking the same thing that most people are thinking and i know i do from time to time which is 
obviously now with COVID and everything, we can't go to the gym like we used to. We don't have access to a lot of usual uh, exercise equipment, but we're gonna just going to have to make do without it. We have the internet, so there's really no excuse. We can, if we're not a fitness expert, we can just check online and look for some exercises we need. I'll tell you what I've done. So I'm actually a yoga instructor, so I do have that benefit of having my own little foundation of a yoga practice that I have with me sort of at all times. But before I was a yoga instructor, I really took things into my own hands. I was YouTubing, figuring out all these different yoga routines, seeing what's good for me, how to release energy in certain areas, because that's what yoga is all about. It's really about getting oxygen and blood flow moving throughout the body. And I'll tell you, I have not compromised because we often like to think, well, I'm not going to spend money on that. It's an unnecessary purchase. Well, you can't compromise with this stuff. This is our epilepsy. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I can spend a couple hundred dollars on a spin bike so that I don't have a seizure and I'm out for two days, I'm going to certainly invest. I've got a spin bike in my bedroom here. My bedroom really is a fitness studio that just happens to have a bed in it. I've got a really nice Lulu lemon yoga mat, certainly a higher end yoga mat that's really great for me unwinding and undoing a lot of that stress that comes from epilepsy. I've also got a spin bike. Thankfully, I didn't have to purchase it myself. I was able to get my hands on it because a roommate who had one just bounced one day, left our apartment with no notice in advance, so we kind of got screwed over. But hey, nonetheless, I've got a spin bike. It's in my room. I probably would have bought one with my own money if I didn't have this one. So don't hold back. Get everything you need. Maybe buy a spin bike. Teach yourself some yoga. Get yourself an actual bicycle if you don't have one. Get out there and bike. That's liberating. That's really therapeutic when you get out there and you're not confined to your immediate surroundings. And, hey, I don't like running or jogging just as much as the next guy. But it's the easiest thing to do. Low barrier to entry. And so I'm doing it all the time. It gets that heart rate up, I get sweating, and when I come back, I just feel amazing. I'm ready to go about the day. I've still got my epilepsy, but I'm living, man. Now, I'm no doctor, okay? I'm no role model, but I'm telling you what's been working for me, it's all just something to think about.